close that. There we go. So I think it's really interesting and fascinating that you had already considered like how your dog is on leash and how that that um, the leash exacerbates any reactivity. Um, and then you had made the jump to, and we're also going to get a fence. Um, those two things fall under the same umbrella. We call that barrier aggression or, or uh, barrier frustration, I think is maybe a more accurate term, um, because aggression tends to suggest um, uh, an intention to do harm. And I don't think that that's the case. Usually when we see dogs on leash that are being held back, um, Captain is actually a really great example of this. Um, over the weekend, we were walking and there was an off-leash dog. And Captain happened to be on his long line, so I could have pulled him back, which would have sent him a signal to lunge into it and start barking at that other dog, or I could let out the leash, which I did, and then he and the dog could kind of say hi a little more appropriately and normally, as far as a dog is concerned. They do the circle butt, butt sniff thing. <laughs> um, super rude when it's people, super appropriate when it's dogs. So when they can say hi in a more normal way, you tend to see a lot of that leash frustration go away. Now, when you see like a fence or a barrier and the dog sees another person or a dog or a kid on a skateboard or the mailman or whatever, and they can't get there to say hi appropriately, the dog starts to get more agitated because they can't, they can't handle it in a, in a normal appropriate way. And so then you start to see more barking and more howling and more frustration. Um, and especially if it's something like a, um, a mailman, they tend to come, or, or a postal service worker, they tend to um, go by at similar times of day. So your dog can start to predict, oh, it's between 2 and 3 p.m. I need to be waiting for this mail carrier to walk by so I can yell at him. And then when I yell, he keeps walking. So I did my job. <laughs> the frustration went away because I barked. Um, so dogs, dogs get, um, get kind of a false sense of, I'm a big dog. I scared off that scary mail carrier. Um, and with the leashes too. So like if they're on a collar, it tends to be worse. Um, although it doesn't totally go away if you put them on a chest attached harness. We can talk about that in a second. Um, but when the dog gets to a threshold point where they're getting ready to bark, if you were to pull back at that point, more often than not, the dog is going to lunge into the harness and start barking more because that dog means I'm going to feel, uh, uh feel a pulling back sensation. And I don't like that. Um, so dogs make the association of that dog means I'm going to be pulled back. So I have to bark. And if you're pulling the dog away, you're creating space. So as far as the dog is concerned, my barking made my parents take me away. So there's space. So it worked to make the threat go away or the frustration go away. Or the other person gives you a weird look like, wow, what's wrong with that dog? And they take their dog away, which creates space, which makes the frustration go away. So either way, the dog learns my barking makes that threat go away or makes that feeling of frustration go away. So next time I see a dog, I'm going to bark harder or more. So the way that you can get around it, there's this thing, I'm going to see if I can find it while I, uh, while I continue talking to you guys. It's called the ladder of aggression. And again, it's another term that I, I think it, it certainly paints a picture, right? The ladder of aggression. Um, but what it really is, is it's just kind of showing when a dog is getting more and more stressed out. Um, so let me see if I can find it here, and I will share my screen once it pops up. Uh, canine letter of aggression. Here we go. Uh, let's see if I can find one that's not on Pinterest. <laughs> we'll go from there. Um, I think that should work. All right. So I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see this, and I'm going to talk to you guys about this. Um, I will just share the whole screen. There we go. Boop, there we are, and make that small. All right, so the letter of aggression, um, you see here, um, bite, snap, growl. Those are the last three on that ladder. Um, so when people uh, say, my dog is really stressed out, or my dog bit, or my dog um, is aggressive on leash, we people tend to think that there's a problem at this point, at the growl. 
and we should really be focusing more on these lower uh, these lower steps. Blinking, yawning, licking the nose or a lip flick. I want you guys to start looking for lip flicks. Like if they're not hungry and they're kind of flicking at the air. Um, and, it, and that's different from when they're um, sniffing a lot and kind of tasting the ground or tasting the air around them to get, um, to get information. Um, they, you'll see blinking, maybe yawning when they're not tired and those lip flicks kind of lumped together. You might see like a head turn, like, oh, I'm a little nervous of that. Or if they see oncoming dogs, you might see them turn away. Um, and then you might see the whole body turn away. Um, one thing that my border collie used to do, she used to walk, if she would see something that was scary to her, she would walk in front of me and sit and look right up at me. So she was trying to tell me that thing makes me uncomfortable, but it took me a while to realize that's what she was trying to communicate. Um, some dogs will just get up and walk away. So especially if you have dogs and like maybe a crawling baby, um, they might just get up and walk away as the baby is coming closer to them. But as those signals get ignored, that they're asking for space or that they're trying to figure out how to cope, you'll start to see um, creeping. Like this dog here, he's kind of like stalking a little bit. Um, and I'm guessing you might see that from Larry from time to time or from your dog from time to time. You'll see the ears go back. Um, they might be staring and stiff straight ahead, but their ears are back. So they're listening to what you're saying behind them on, their, on the leash. Um, but they're also signaling to the other oncoming threat or the thing that they're unsure about. I don't know about this. Um, then you'll see maybe um, they're standing crouched. So you see how this dog's back is kind of leaning back a little bit. Um, the tail is tucked under. This is a, a clear indication of fear, um, which tends to get overridden the further up this ladder you go. You might see a dog lie down with its leg up. Um, so like when you come home, sometimes our dogs will greet us like laying on the side with their leg up and their tail flapping. In that circumstance, your dog might be saying, hey, pat my belly. But if the ears are back and they're flicking their lips a lot, they're blinking a lot, and they're all, they also kind of like are laying on their side with their leg up, they're basically, that's what you might have heard of like submissive pose. Um, and, and I'm putting that in air quotes because we just tend to use that term in, in a way that's not really related to animal behavior, but people tend to understand the idea of a submissive pose. Um, and then this is where it starts to get a little bit more serious, stiffening and staring. And I'm gonna show a little video here of Captain doing exactly this um, in a second. And then the growl. And this is usually when I get a phone call saying, my dog is growling at the baby or my dog is growling on leash. Um, a snap and then a bite. So if we can see that our dog is starting to show stress signals down here, it's much easier to, to respond to and to get the dog to listen or behave or get them uh, feeling a little bit better about a circumstance if you can turn it's easier to say touch and have your dog respond when they're turning their head away than it is up here when they feel that they need to growl or start lunging and responding in a more frustrated way now this does not mean that you have a bad dog this does not mean in any way that you have an aggressive dog which is why i really don't love this term ladder of aggression it really should just be the, the uh, stress signal ladder or something like that, but that doesn't quite have the same punch. And I think um, owners hear aggression and then they pay attention a little bit more. I don't want my dog to be aggressive. Most dogs who are doing these things are not aggressive at all. They're communicating, I don't know what to do. This doesn't feel right, help me. And when these lower things are ignored, and these are things that we don't usually teach new students. Like we're teaching you sit down, stay calm, uh, hopefully walk nicely on a leash. But what happens when it goes wrong? Well, we don't usually have time in a six week class to say, well, if your dog is blinking a lot, they're probably saying, please help me out. Um, it's not until the growling that everybody's listening. Um, so let me show this quick video of Captain um, doing that stiff walk. And I want you to see, I think I might've even shown this to you guys last week. Um, I know I showed it to another class. Um, let me see. It was Captain, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. not that one, this one. Um, and okay, so let me turn this volume off because I will just narrate. Um, 
So in this, he's going to start walking very stiffly. Oh, it's freaking out. I'm going to give it a second. Um, so when he starts, I'm not waiting for him to start lunging and barking. I'm used to walking behind my dog. I'm used to seeing him do that stalk, especially if he sees a critter. But that same shot of adrenaline that he receives when he's like, there's a critter, is the same shot of adrenaline that he would get if it's like, oh, is that my dad walking towards me? Or is that my kid on a bike riding toward me? Is that a kid on a skateboard that I don't know and I should be scared? That shot of adrenaline for him and for most dogs indicates I need to pay attention and I'm either going to be very excited or very upset. <laughs> and so here, there we go. Captain is starting, I'm very attuned to my dog walking. This is why I took out the camera and started filming. So that stance that he's given, that is very uh, typical for him to notice something, but you notice his tail is partially up. He's standing pretty stiff. His ears are forward. So he's paying attention to something in the distance. And as I was going through this, it, it became clear to me that it was probably the birds. And like, if I were playing the video, you would just hear these birds. Um, but in that moment, it wasn't until he was playing it back, I'm like, oh, that's probably what he was going at because I was so focused while his adrenaline was going up, so was mine. So I was trying to pay attention to my dog, so I tuned everything else out. So as he's noticing this, he's on a back clip harness because we were on our way to the field. I said his name and he was able to come back. So he, there was like a little lip flick there. Um, see if I can pull that back up so you guys can see it. Right there. Um, that little lip flick is indicative that it's like, I'm stressed, help me out, but he's not so stressed that he can't listen. As this goes on, I'm actually going to take the, the mute off, but as this video continues to play, you're going to see that he's not going to be able to listen when I say Captain Touch or Captain Leave It. These are two things that he's really good at, so I can then go back to this ladder of aggression, and one thing that that I like to look at is how far up is he where he starts tuning me out and he can't hear me? And for him, it tends to be when he's getting stiff. Um, and there are times as we get closer to this, um, to these birds, um, you're going to see that I'm asking Captain leave it and he's not able to, so I have to try something else. But the thing that I'm doing is I'm stopping forward motion. And in this case, it works because the threat or the exciting thing isn't coming closer. So I have the ability to work through this here in this video. If it were a dog walking towards us, we would have to handle this differently. I might have to cross the street, have them do some find it in my neighbor's driveway, um, or I just might have to turn and start walking in the other direction until he can listen and focus. If I lose his focus, so remember in week one of this class, we focused a lot on dog's name or cat's name, because I think my cat was in this too. Um, so captain, 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 treat, 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 click, treat, click, treat, click, treat. Their name means give me attention. If I don't have his attention, there's no way I'm going to be able to say captain, leave it. Because if I can say captain and he pays attention, I might be able to say leave it, he can listen. So their name is also an indicator of how high up this ladder they are. Um, so let me come back here. Boop, boop, boop. And I'm going to unmute it and I'm just going to let this play out. Good boy. Watch it. So look at, like, I know, like, the, the caption is pretty high, uh, or he's in it, but as this starts to go out, you'll see, like, how stiff he's standing and how high up his tail is and that he's not able to turn and listen. Cap, leave it. So he didn't even flick his ears back to say, I acknowledge that you exist. Um, so for him right now, he is starting to come up this ladder to the point where he's not able to pay attention to me at all. Um, I would I would like to get back to the video. <laughs> um, here we go. I'm going to try something different because leave it isn't working. Find it. So for Captain, find it worked. Um, leave it didn't work. I couldn't even get him to look back. So I couldn't keep going, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. I said, find it, and he was able to go find it. So that worked for him. 
But he's going right back to the thing that was exciting. Leave it. Yes, good boy. And he's being really sharky when he's taking those treats. He was actually biting me pretty hard. Um, so that's another indication if your dog is getting really close to that stress, that stress threshold where they can't um, maybe listen. If they're taking treats like a shark where they might usually take it a little bit more gently, that's also something to look out for. So remember those four Ds that we were talking about, distance, duration, distractions, and difficulty. Distance is going to be your best friend out in the real world on walks. As you're walking your dog and they're unable to turn around and, and because that thing is either exciting or your dog is going to lunge and, or whatever, um, having the ability to have them turn away, um, finding that distance point for your dog is going to be really crucial. Um, and again, it's harder if the dog is walking toward you. If you can cross the street and get that to work, great. You can try touches. You can try sits. You can try find it. You've got to find the thing that's going to work for your dog. Um, and that's why on this video, I call it the hierarchy of awesome at the very beginning. It's me and my daughter going over the things that Captain really likes and that he'll work for, but he won't work for them in every circumstance with the exception of the words, find it. My border collie, it was a Frisbee. So if I said Frisbee, I could call her out of a dog fight. Um, so each individual dog is going to have a thing that will work. It's just going to be finding that thing that can get them turned away if they're starting to creep up that ladder of frustration. It's really hard and pulling them a lot. Here's a lip That's flick. Up. That's it. So I'm closing distance, which is making this harder. And he's less interested. He's going to be on something. He was talking a little bit there. And now he's interested again. Something's got his attention. He's kind of stalking. You can kind of see like how he's like moving his feet, like he's stalking. He's not slowing down, but like his gait has changed a bit. A little more than he usually does. He usually is pretty chill when he's walking. Yep, leave it. And again, now that we're closer, he's unable to like answer to his name, turn around, show me that I exist. Leave it didn't work. So if you find yourself in this place where you're saying dog, leave it, or dog, tucked, or dog, whatever, and they are at that point where they're making a decision and it probably won't be the one you want them to make, <laughs> um, just stop forward motion. Don't keep moving or find a way to create space. Um, if I needed to pull him back here, I could. Um, but I want to see if I can get him to make the right decision, um, which is not easy to do. And the only reason this worked was because I was actually planning on doing this, um, this kind of video for my students anyway. So it was already in the back of my head, what would I do in this case? And that's something that I would ask you guys to try. What, like, is there a squeak toy that your dog really likes that if they see something and you squeak it, they're like, oh wait, that thing is more interesting. Um, so here, Captain, find it. I said his name, he did respond, right. but it was really the find it. Oh, where'd it go? I dropped it, huh? So when we talk about doing something else, using something else in their toolbox, if leave it isn't working, what will work for your dog? If come isn't working, what might work for your dog? Maybe touch. So think about what's reinforcing to your dog. What would shake off? Did you find them? And that shake off is super important. That shake off, um, I want you guys to look for this the next time your dog like, woo, 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 like whether they're barking out the window or something startles them. Like if you have a dog that might be a little bit more startled um, in the, uh, like maybe with thunder or fireworks going off, wait for that shake off. That's an indication. It's almost like us like walking away from something scary going, whew, or, um, or just, it's just like, I'm done. Okay, now I can move on. So that stress shake off is actually something that we trainers look for and that we start to indicate to our students who have maybe some leash frustration that the dog is kind of trying to move past it. It might even be several feet after an explosion, a uh, uh, fight, bark, 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 bark. You might walk like a hundred feet and then they just stop and shake. Let them do that. That is, uh, that is an important signal for them.